what is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon round four of the rugby championship just around the corner. Team announcements started coming out. Springboks versus the All Blacks. So time for another fun preview video. We're going to have a run through of the team sheets of the squads that have been named. Go over our thoughts on the team. We've got some omissions. We've got some inclusions that people might find a bit surprising. Uh, we'll go through uh, thoughts on the players, some expectations from this game, and finally giving a, uh, a score prediction. I did pretty well last week. I said Springboks by three, they won by four. So hey, I uh, at least got one of the games called correctly because I think I went for Argentina in the uh, in the other one. But if you enjoy these videos, remember to drop the video a like. And of course, drop down in the comment section your thoughts on the teams as we're going through them. No matter if you're supporting one team or the other or you're uh, a neutral going in, let me know your uh, your own thoughts on the teams down in the comment section. So last week, Springboks took this one. Coming back from uh, a pretty decent score deficit um, in that first half, they came back. They managed to win that game. Four points. And there was, a, there was a lot to talk about in that game. I didn't do any sort of reviews for, for the game so far. I saw a lot of the online discourse, uh, the, the officiating that went on that game. As a neutral, I get to sit back and just enjoy the rugby. I'm not you know, supporting a team either way. Uh, but man, there, there was some rough, <laughs> rough refereeing decisions. And even more than I even saw watching the game, uh, I've seen uh, the Bongi and Banambi try has been one that's been talked about a lot. Damien McKenzie... Uh, with the, the clock shot running out on people's TV screens, it said zero and he was allowed to go. Sasha Feinberg had his, he got said he had four seconds to take it. And then two seconds later, the referee blew him up for it. Uh, I haven't seen anyone talk about the, the Cody Taylor try. Personally, when I saw the first New Zealand try by Cody Taylor, I really thought the lifters for the line out uh, did a massive crossing uh, for the driving mall that subsequently went on for uh, for that. And they didn't go back and look at that one. I think I was maybe the only person who saw that one. So I'm probably wrong about it. But a lot of controversial talks going on, uh, but an enjoyable game. And uh, I really love these, these fixtures between these two massive sides. The game went a completely different way to my own expectations. I was expecting a lot of kicking. Uh, three points is going to be really important and just both teams taking penalties. I didn't really think we'd see a lot from, you know, try scoring or open rugby. It was so much more aggressive. It was so much more impactful than uh, I was necessarily expecting it to be. And I'm thankful for it because it was such a, uh, an enjoyable game to watch. Uh, moving on to uh, to this week then. Teams are shifting around. Starting out with the, uh, with the home team for this one then, South Africa. Um, who the one name that I want to jump in before we get through the rest of the team, Sia Khaleesi is in the team. Now, my understanding was he fractured his cheek uh, with the, the Sam Kane. That was another one. That was another controversial one that I saw on the online discourse. The, the Sam Kane impact with him um, fractured his cheek. And the South Africa haven't announced their team on the Tuesday, as they normally do. They've left it late. And I assumed what it was going to be was seeing about injury statuses. I assumed Khaleesi was going to be one and Arensa might be another one as to whether or not they were going to be in. So they've left it longer. Uh, but Khaleesi back in the team. Man, I'm waiting for that guy to just bring some uh, bring some aggression to, to this game as well. So uh, starting out of this front row, Oxenche, Bongi, Manami, Franz, Malherber. Uh, once again, who these three boys were, were holding out that, that pack so well at the start. The lineups from Bongi and Manami have been solid. Um, it's it's a really interesting thing. I don't know what's gone on with with Malcolm Marks. Uh, I think about two years ago, I would have said Malcolm Marks was up there for the best hooker in the in the world. I think it would probably for me would have been between him and Dan Sheehan with where they were at. Uh, Malcolm Marks is throwing has has got more challenged over over the last maybe year or so when I when I've been watching him. The long throws, especially going over the line out or just not, or just getting intercepted, you know, or, or just getting messed about with. Short throws are still fine, but the long throws are beginning to get very pressured for Malcolm Mark. So for me, I think this is still the right way around to have Umbanambi starting because his throwing has been on point and against New Zealand, you want to mess up your, your line out. I think that's the, the right way to go. Uh, lock department. We've gone back to probably what a lot of South African sport would have wanted to see last week. Eben Etzebeth going back in alongside, and hopefully I'm going to get this pronunciation kind of correctly, uh, Nohe. Um, I've, uh, of course, guys, I'm over here. I'm in Wales. Uh, there's a lot of names that come across, especially with the Southern Hemisphere teams that pronunciations, uh, I basically have to go off of what I hear on the commentary <laughs> from, from TV. Cause a lot of these surnames, you know, you don't come across a lot in, uh, in Wales. So if you guys are South African supporters and you have a better phonetic way to, to help me try and get that, uh, that, that surname out, I'll certainly try and listen out for it more, but, uh, what a game he had last week. Um, really, really impactful into the Springboks line. He had to go off for a period of time. I think it was a HI that he went off for. Um, and then he came back on later and he saw the difference in in the impact in that Springboks line out. So I understand why he's staying in there. Evan Etzebeth cleared this this week from his, you know, his injury concerns that he had last week when he was on the bench. Starting in that number four shirt is allowing Peter Steftitoy to move back to that back row. So Sia Khaleesi, Peter Steftitoy, Jasper Visa uh, going to be filling up that back row. 
monster back row because Jasper Visa. I, I've always liked Jasper Visa, but I, you know, as number eights go, I, I've, he's always sort of gone through a bit of a roller coaster. Oh, he's had some good games, some some okay games. Last week, man, the boy didn't stop. He was just expelling a hundred percent of energy in one half. That was his game plan. I'm going all out for forty minutes. I'm going to crush it. Thought he had a superb game. So glad to see him back in. Uh, that number eight shirt. Halfback partnership switching up, though. Grant Williams going in alongside Andre Pollard. Uh, now, this is interesting because Sasha Feinberg and Koma Zulu, I have nothing but positive things to say about this. I think he's been absolutely fantastic. I think he deserves that 10 shirt. Marnie Libok is in desperate trouble, I think, to get into this, this South Africa team because Sasha Feinberg is crushing it uh, in that number 10 shirt. So move to the bench this week. There's obviously a game plan. You know, that's, that's the Razzie style, right? There's something going on there because there's no way you have a game like Sasha Feinberg had last week and then he gets moved to the bench on form. It's not that. There's something else going on there. So they've gone for Andre Pollard, experienced head in these big fixtures, staying in at 10. Grant Williams coming in at 9, I'm really looking forward to. His impact from the bench has been really, really good. I would almost lean towards saying he's the most in form scrum half for me at the minute from from the South African perspective he's played less minutes than the other scrum half so maybe he's just having a really good you know less minute sort of section but I think he's been absolutely fantastic I think he deserves a start um, and just the speed that he gets that ball out the ruck I think that's a nice change to, to see him in there I would maybe like to have seen him alongside Sasha Feinberg just because of the the speed, I think the two of them could play out together. But, you know, Andre Pollard always, uh, you know, a solid head to have in there. Centre partnership, Damien Dialende once again going in alongside Jesse Creel, who got moved out to the, the wing last week. Uh, it was a bit of a, a different position for me to see him in, but I actually thought he did pretty good wing cover, to be fair to him. Um, and then in that back three, Cheslin Colby moving to the left wing this week. Kanan Moody comes back in on the right wing and Vili LaRue in at fullback after Afalili Fassi was was busy last week. He had some, some certainly some good tackles. One tackle that got him yellow carded, but... You could argue you know, maybe needed to be made. Even if you end up getting a yellow card, it kind of impacted them scoring a try. So, you know, depending on your own perspective, um, you know, uh, that yellow card probably warranted, but probably helped South Africa by the end of the game anyway. Um, Kanan Moody coming in. I don't think I've seen Kanan Moody play since the World Cup. I think it was the last time I saw him play, but I, a player I'm, I'm rating very highly. I'm looking forward to seeing him back in the Springboks team. Uh, can also move into you know the centre if you need him to as well. So coverage is pretty good around the team. Replacements, they've gone for the 5-3 this week. So again, I think this is sort of more in line with the, the Pollard start thing. They're, they're going, I think, a bit more to the, the Springboks of old, maybe with this sort of style. They're going for the 5-3. Andre Pollard starting. It's going to be a slightly different game to the one we saw last week. Malcolm Mark, Sheena Camp and Vincent Koch going back in. It's that replacement from Rowe. Wagner Smith going in alongside of Elroy Lowe. Um, means lock cover. I'm guessing they're looking at Peter Steftu to, to move back into that second row. I'm not sure if Elroy Lowe does a great deal of the, the second row stuff. A lot of people might know more about that than me. Uh, he might be able to move in, but he's, he's sort of in there as that, that back row, I, I would assume for me. So I assume they're looking at Peter Steff to toy to maybe the, be the guy that's going to cover the second row a bit more if, if injuries come that way. And then the replacement backs, Yedin Hendricks, uh, Sasha Feinberg, and Gomazulu, and Lacanya Am. So not a bad uh, section of, of backs to go on there. Yedin Hendricks, uh, you know, was a guy who was was everywhere at, at one point coming in for, for South Africa. Um, I did wonder whether they might give the, the Vandenberg guy uh, another shot. He didn't have a great game for me. When he, when he played against Australia, and maybe they think All Blacks is a, a too big a game in where the tournament is currently point standing wise uh, to give him another shot. Uh, but, you know, he's probably going to need minutes. Maybe he'll play more games against Argentina. I don't think he had a great game against Australia, but Yedin Hendricks are getting the, the nod for, for scrum off. And so, something I want to talk about uh, quickly before we move on to the New Zealand team is uh, the way this South African team has, has been playing. I think they've moved in such a nice direction with, I think, the thing that's separating. These two teams at the minute from the game I saw last week and across the rest of the rugby championship, something that South Africa is beginning to land really well now is it doesn't feel any more like this South African team is a starting 15 on a bench. It's definitely getting towards a situation now where South Africa just have a 23-man team. And it's just about what time do you play in the game? What minute are you coming on? Maybe you need to come back on after you've already come off. Um, it's really beginning to move in a really positive direction. And I think that's where rugby is, is typically tending to head now, rather than having your starters and your bench. You're trying to have the full 23-man squad. Whereas New Zealand, for me, is still feeling like they've got the starting 15 and then the bench comes on later in the game and they kind of seal out the game. What I expect in a, in, in a game is, you know, you sort of start out, you know, you kick off, you, you want to spike up really early on 
And then towards the end of that first half, you probably begin to drift off as players get tired and what have you. And what you want is your bench to come on while efforts may be getting off towards the end of that second half. You want them to come on, make a big impact and seal it out for the game because they're not going to play the 40 minutes. They're probably going to play 30 minutes, 25 minutes. So they should be able to seal it out by the end of the game, but at a, at a really high standard. The All Blacks for me at the minute, I felt like they've, they've, they've come on, they go up and then as they get on, they sort of drop down. And then they just kind of flatline out when the bench comes on. So at the minute for me, the South African bench is, is one of the biggest impacts that's happened in this in this rugby championship where they're just being able to seal out that game. So from a New Zealand perspective, I think that's the change they'll want to see. Now, in terms of the, the team that's uh, that's been announced for them, some big changes happening. Uh, and not all of them are, are tactical, unfortunately, for them. Uh, two big omissions from this week. Uh, Ethan Blackadder and uh, Caleb Clark. Both out with injuries. Two players that I think played very, very well um, last week. And Ethan Blackout especially. I did say in the preview video last week about maybe I would have looked to put Scott Barrett at, at six and had uh, Tubo Vai alongside of Sam Darry and had the, the three jumpers at the line-out. Ethan Blackout actually worked really hard in that number six shirt. And across that game, I was like, oh, I think this is the right way they've gone. Big loss to have lost Blackout of there. And, uh, you know, you've got people like Caleb Clark, the power winger over there. Um, again, I think that's potentially going to be a, a big loss for them on the on the wing. So starting on this front row, Tamaiti Williams, Cody Taylor, and Tyrell Lomax once again going in in that front row. Cody Taylor got over for his try last week as well, which was nice to see because the, the 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 mauling tries don't seem to have come as much as I really thought that would be the the main way we got to see tries um, from these teams in the in these big games. But Caleb Clark's wing was the was the, was the target zone last week. The lock department again unchanged for them. Scott Barrett going back in alongside Tubo Vai. Again, the the lineout situation I think is something they they can look to punish. I think especially when Marks comes on, I think with where Malcolm Marks is, is throwing has been at, especially for the for the long range throws, I think I would be at every single line out, no matter what, putting your front jumper up uh, just to try and put pressure on Marks and maybe make him force him to play the, the long throws and actually put pressure on that. I think I would be really trying to get in the air as much as possible for those, for those line outs rather maybe. You don't even necessarily need to match the man. Sometimes you can throw your front man up and they've got to throw it over your guy and get it to dip to their guy at the back or something. I think the line-out section is still an area that they could look to, to try and contest. And then that back row. Uh, Wallace Satiti comes in alongside of Sam Kane and Ardi Sarveya, uh, who uh, had a few penalties go against him last week. Ardi Sarveya, maybe a little bit too eager, really pushing that uh, that out. We did have a couple of penalties going his way. Satiti coming in. Hopefully looking to have a, a big game. He's got some some big shoes to him. That six shirt is actually getting more competitive for New Zealand. At, at one point, I was like, I don't know who is having this six shirt. Then Shannon Frizzell started playing really well. And I was like, this is great. And then he's gone. And then Ethan Blackadder has taken some time. And I've gone, you know what? I'm seeing what he's bringing to the team in that six shirt out with his injury. So Satiti now going to be coming in for maybe, a, you know, a third choice uh, number six for me. Let's see if he has a, a good game. In the uh, in the halfback partnership, switching up this week, Cortez Ratima going in alongside of Debbie McKenzie. Um, I think it'd be nice to see Ratima get in. Bit of speed. I think TJ Pirinal has been playing fine for about 40 minutes and it begins to, to drop off. He had his, his little warning last week from Andrew Brace as well for, for shouting, even though I actually think, as someone who used to play scrum half, I think he was correct. I think he was correct in his call. I think you, you can't shout at a referee. You can't just walk up and shout at a referee. Uh, it's someone you've got to, you know, bring up after to get your captain to go up and say, you need to be looking at this because you're missing, you know, the clear, clear infringements going on. I actually think DJ Pirino got the call right, just didn't go about it the right way. And as soon as you do that, they lost, you know, a penalty in the South African 22 from a great position. And then you back up at the halfway line. Little things like that are going to punish you. You can't be doing that. So the Cordes Ratima coming in. Energy, pace, try and get New Zealand on, on the front foot, I think is a good move. Something I said in the last preview video about these games, I really expected the, the backs to be the main area that New Zealand focus on. South Africa love loading up on their forwards. It seems to be a really big thing in these fixtures where South Africa lay down the gauntlet of, of we're going to go big powerhouse forward games and, and other teams going up against them seem to say, we'll take on that challenge. We'll we'll go head on head with the, with the big boys. And I do wonder why um, South Africa are awesome at it. They love their forward pack. It's how they're winning games. If I was a team going up against South Africa, I would be saying, avoid them. Let's do lots of tactical kicking. Let's ship it out to the wing. Let's make these boys run around the pitch all day. Let's try to, try and tire them out or just don't let them get in the game. We had the Argentina-New Zealand game where we didn't have a scrub to like 65 minutes. 
you know, how deflating for those Ar- Argentinian, you know, lads to be saying like, oh man, we've we've not been able to get involved with the scrum because there wasn't one. Imagine doing that with, with South Africa and just not giving them a scrum for 60 minutes. Suddenly having these massive players in the front row at, at scrum time doesn't matter because you're not letting them have the scrum. Stay away from the forwards. Play out the backs, try and tie them out and try something different. New Zealand last week really went head on head. They were going for the the the, the big forward pack game. And I, I really feel like South Africa were, were, were winning that, that forward pack game as well for me. I would like to see them try something else. So someone like Ratima coming in alongside Damien McKenzie. I'm looking for crossfield kicks. I'm looking to get out to the wingers. Two tries. Caleb Clark on that left wing. And then they stop doing it. Why? Go out to the wing. Do do more stuff. I don't know why teams necessarily front up against the best thing that South Africa has to offer. I find it better than I would just try and uh, avoid it. Centre partnership. Jordy Barrett goes back in alongside Rico Iwani. Jordy Barrett. Uh, great uh, awareness last week um, to, to get his little interception try. South Africa may be doing stuff. Consistency is one thing. Repetitiveness can be another. Uh, off the back of that line out, trying to ship it out wide, it always went to Khaleesi to be uh, your first carrier up off the back of that line out. Eventually, noticed at half time, coaches obviously informed the players, they're always getting it to Khaleesi. Hit that path in the middle. Jordy Barrett ran it like a champ. Went over for a try. Luckily, the, the, the South Africa team is good enough that they just adapted to it. They stopped doing it afterwards because I think that could have been more, more and more infringements. Maybe something for South Africa to look at. Tactics for first half and then tactics for a second half rather than continuing it all the way through. Uh, but it was great work by Jordy Barrett to get over for a try, even though I didn't have him in my fantasy team. So there it is. Uh, and then in the back three, Mark Talea comes in on the left wing. Sever Reese on the right wing. And Will Jordan moves to the, the fullback position. So some big shoes to Villa. Mark Talea has felt quiet for me over the course of this rugby championship. Someone I've, I've always thought of as, as pretty, you know, he's, he's the impossible lad to stop, right? He just seems to slip through tackles. Really hasn't made the impact for me. Came on again last week. You got Caleb Clark scoring two tries. Mark Talea comes on and then nothing happens on, on his wing. It's like, well, you've got to come on and make the, make the impact. Sort of goes again what I was saying about the bench. They're coming on and seeing out the game. I want players to come on for any team. Come on. Make the impact be the uh, be the difference. I'm looking forward to see Will Jordan move back to, to fullback though, because I've seen some some nice games from him at fullback. Um, then the impact bench. I'm going to start putting in air quotes because I still haven't seen it in three games yet. The impact bench for uh, for New Zealand. Uh, pretty similar to what we've seen in past weeks. Armour, Tonga, Fassi, and Fletcher Newell, Sam Darry, Luke Jacobson coming in. I think could be a nice switch up for for this team coming in because I, I think maybe after Blackadder went off, there was a bit of a drop. In that uh, in that intensity from from carrying the ball, Luke Jacobson, someone that will carry hard as well. So I think that might be a nice addition to to move into this team. T.J. Piranara, Anton Linnet Brown, and Bodie Barrett uh, are going to be your replacement backs on the bench. And if you remember the New Zealand England game, it was I just think of them for a second. Uh, Bowden Barrett coming on from the bench changed the game, and that's what I mean by by the impact from the bench. Bowden Barrett has that ability. He will come on and change a game completely. And he can come on at 10. He can come on at 15, wherever they're going to move him to. Um, I think that's going to be really important. And you need to be seeing that from the from the rest of the New Zealand team. Because at the minute, it just it just hasn't quite uh, quite been there for me. I think South Africa's had a much better impact from the, from the bench. Uh, so going into this game, then score predictions. What are we thinking from this? Now, a different style teams. Don't, I kind of want to say what I said last week. But I was kind of wrong last week with, with how I thought the game was going to go. They've gone for the 5-3 from the spring box. New Zealand are 5-3. They might be more evenly matched for this one. They might not stick as much for the forwards. This one might be a more open game. Um, you've got Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu and Andre Pollard on the South Africa team for the for the kicking percentages. Damian McKenzie's uh, been getting more into his, his kicking for me. So I think, again, I think kicking will be important. I wouldn't be surprised if first half, both teams just want to try and play a bit more tactically. We get to see a first half that's a few more three points if when they're on the on the cards. And then in the second half is actually where this game might begin to, to open up and you see a lot more sort of running rugby. It's a big game for both teams. I think New Zealand know if they lose this, the rugby championship is going the way of South Africa. And then on the flip side, South Africa go, if we win this, I think the, the, the rugby championship is, is basically already sorted out. I really don't see Argentina being able to take a win against South Africa. I think they're just they're just two different leagues apart for this one. So a lot on the line. New Zealand will want to play just sort of maybe a little bit more conservatively just to try and ensure they get a win. And South Africa have just got to do the exact same thing. So I think more penalties going in. I still think low. I never think big scores between these two teams separating them. I'm going to go for another Springboks win in my prediction. 
I'm going to say I might go out a bit more because I think they might have lost a bit from not having Blackadder and, and Caleb Clark from the power game. I'm going to go Springboks for me by five this week. That's going to be uh, my prediction. Let me know your own predictions down in the comment section, guys. Uh, we're still waiting for Australia, Argentina. If they come out before the games are kicking off, <laughs> I have time to do a video. Uh, we'll do another one. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to know if that video goes out. Um, might well be tomorrow because I know Australia announced them really late last week. Looking forward to another great round of the uh, the rugby championship. Make sure you get any fantasy teams and all that good stuff locked in in time for uh, for Monday's video when we check out who's going to be in the lead at the end of round four. I'll see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.